Hello and welcome to Here's to Your Health. I'm your host, Veggie Patty, and it's my pleasure to bring you information on healthy living. On today's episode, we're going to talk about kayaking. I am here with Tiffany Van Hay, and she is the owner of Riverside Kayak Connection. So I wanted to welcome you to the show and thank you for talking to us. Thank you for having me. So how long have you been kayaking? I've been kayaking for about 15 years. Um, I started doing a little bit of white water. We used to go to West Virginia, and then we started um, doing more sea kayaking. So we started mm -hmm. doing more on the Detroit River. Um, really fell in love with the great waters around here, and then started doing the Great Lakes, Lake Superior quite a bit, Lake Michigan, Lake Huron. Okay, great. So how did you come up with the idea of opening this center? We, um, when I was trying to buy merchandise, um, I actually had to drive to Pittsburgh because there weren't any, air, any shops that were in the local area that specialized in sea kayaking. So we started thinking if we were wanted, we're looking for that, then other people were as well. And um, I was surprised how many people actually wanted to get out and kayak around here. Great, great. So now, a lot of people, I mean, they've heard of kayaking, but they don't really know like what it is. So how, a lot of people are, I think, are more familiar with canoeing. So how is it different than canoeing, per se? Um, and a kayak is, is a canoe. It's just a decked canoe. But you're going to be seated more instead of a kneeling position, or um, you're small, shorter in the, water, in the water more. So it's mm -hmm. um, more in the water line. Um, so I feel like it's more of a connection than when you're canoeing. Um, canoes are also, since they're so open, they're tough to have on bigger water. You really need to have a pretty good skill level to take a canoe out on the Great Lakes. So they are great for smaller bodies of water like the Huron River, but not so good for um, like a beginner on the Detroit River. Where a kayak, the, the way it's designed is uh, more appropriate for somebody who's just starting out to get onto bigger kind of waters. Okay, so the kayak is, you said, more into the water, so it's more like a lower center of gravity per Correct, se. yep. So does that make you less likely to tip over? Exactly, you're gonna be more <laughs> stable because you're lower center of gravity. Okay, so. and that's what I think a lot of people are, they always hear about as kayak, like, oh, I fell out of my kayak, or I mean, is it a, I mean can people expect to to get very wet when they kayak? Um, the majority of the people don't have an issue with falling out. I mean, the, occasionally you get somebody who's a little tippier. Um, if you start out with a boat that's fairly stable to begin with is a good way. Um, men, especially who are tummy or taller people in general, are gonna have a little harder time just because your center of gravity is gonna be higher. Um, but in general, most people, you know, within the first five minutes kind of get used to it. And it's, you don't have that many people who capsize that often, especially if you kind of pick the right days and go out when you don't have big conditions to start with. Okay, great. So there are all different types of kayaks. I mean, I, I've uh, kayaked a few times and I know that there's like a one person, there's two person, there's sea kayaks. And so what are all the different types of kayaks? There's, um, so you're going to start with what most people think of is what you see on TV a lot of times is a whitewater kayak, which in Michigan we don't have a lot of white water. So, but those are going to be a real short flat bottom boat because that's something that you're going to want to be able to maneuver with. Um, the next step would be a recreational kayak, which is still going to be a shorter boat, so you can take it on a smaller bodies of water where you want to be able to turn easier. Then you get into the touring and the sea kayaks, so they're going to be longer and skinnier. They're going to go faster and track better, so when you're on bigger water, those are the options that you want. So the first thing that you want to decide if you're going to kayak is what body of water you want to go on, and then select the boat that's appropriate for that. Okay. And we always say that you can um, paddle a boat down, but you can't paddle a boat up. So a boat that is designed for bigger water, like the Great Lakes, can be paddled on a smaller body of water, like the Huron River. But if it's a boat that's designed for the Huron River, you shouldn't really be taking it out on bigger water. Right, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, and the majority of them are gonna be solo. They're single boats. There are a few tandems, but that's not a huge part of, um, especially people who are buying them. It's hard because you have to always have somebody to go with you if you're in a tandem. Mm -hmm. Most people find that they like to be in their own boat, and even if they're going to go out with a partner, they each get a single boat. Okay. So let's talk about places around Michigan to kayak. So I think a lot of people don't think of our waterways as places to kayak. I mean, a lot of people go boating, but they don't think of a kayaking. So where are some really good waterways around here that people can kayak? Well, the, the Huron River is 100 miles long, so there's a ton of different locations. Um, we do a lot on the lower Huron, so Oakwoods Metro Park. Nice thing with that is that you can paddle back to your boat, so you don't have to worry about staging vehicles. Um, because of where the dam is located, mm -hmm. um, doing Point Moule, you can paddle up the Huron. That's a super area for like getting started. Um, Elizabeth Park, the canal at Elizabeth Park is really good for like young people. And then the Detroit River is some of the best paddling in the Midwest. I mean, you can and anywhere from the city of Detroit all the way down river. Um, there are launch locations. There's two in Wyandotte. There's one on Grozeal. They just keep adding new locations that you're going to be able to put in so that you can cover different sections of the, of the water. 
Okay, great. And I know like you guys also offer tours, right? What are some of the tours that you guys do? Our most popular tour is the Detroit Historical Canal Tour. Um, we leave from Harris Gentry Park, which is in Detroit, and paddle the canals, like where the Fisher Mansion is. Most people are familiar with that area. Um, but it's, you're in these canals, you're basically in people's backyards. It is just an incredible experience. And so many people don't even know that those canals exist. Um, some people call it the Little Venice of Detroit. It's just a really unique experience. Um, we also do tours out of Wyandotte, going around Grassy Island is one of the popular ones. Grosse Eel, you can go up the Thoroughfare Canal. Um, Lake Erie Metro Park is a great location. You can get into Humbug Marsh, so there's a lot of history. Um, and then the Rouge River, we do the Lower Rouge, which is more the industrial section. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of neat that there's places that you can see history, industry, nature. There's a little bit for everybody, you know, not too far from Metro Detroit. Okay, great. So now what are some safety uh, precautions that people need to think about when they're kayaking? Um, we always recommend not kayaking alone. You should go out with a friend, especially when you're in cold water, like when we're in the shoulder seasons, we call them. Um, make sure you're wearing your life jacket. I mean, you, it's more so important if you have it on. Um, being in an appropriate boat, if you're in the Detroit River, you want a boat that's not completely open. So if you do get water into it, it's only going to be in the cockpit, not the whole boat, because you're not going to be able to get it to shore. Um, we do recommend that people take classes if they're going to do bigger bodies of water so you learn how to do what we call a wet exit. So if you did mm -hmm. capsize, then how do you get back in your boat in the water without getting to shore? Um, and the big thing too, I think Michigan, the hardest thing is, is the cold water. So if you're mm -hmm. going to go out when it's, the water's cold, make sure you're dressing appropriate. Um, cotton is not a good thing to do. I usually tell people either um, clothes, I mean there are tons of kayaking clothes, but clothes you wear for other sports or when you do laundry, think about when you take it out of the laundry, your fleece is almost dry, your blue jeans are still soaking wet. Mm -hmm. So you want to wear things that are not going to hold that water. Okay, all right. So now if people are kayaking the Detroit River, um, the people don't realize that there's actually, a lot of people don't realize there's a current in the river. So how does that affect um, the kayaking? And is, and is that, where would you, I don't think the Detroit River maybe is necessarily a place for somebody to start that hasn't started. So right. where, would, where would a calmer body of water be? I would recommend that if you're getting started, the Huron River would be a great place, okay. or the canal at Elizabeth Park. Um, and then if you're going to go out, beginners can go on the Detroit River, I just recommend that you go out with a group. Find okay. somebody who's more experienced and go out with those. I mean, it's not that scary, but you don't want to be there by yourself not knowing some of the skills. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there is a pretty good current. We recommend usually paddling upstream first and then coming back downstream because you get more tired at the end. Mm -hmm. And then the biggest thing you have to watch out for is the wind. If you get a, a bad wind, and that can, that's, you're fighting that even more than the current. So you kind of want to okay. look at the conditions before you go out. Okay, all right. So now, um, if somebody, let's say somebody says, hey, that sounds really fun, I want to try kayaking. Um, and so they go to a place in the, you know, where they have kayaks. So what are some things, I mean, hopefully wherever they go, they'll have a safety orientation and, and the basics, but what are some basics that people like, need to know about kayaking? Um, some things that people don't think about are, like you use your whole body, so you really want to look for like, boats that have foot pegs in them and make sure that you're adjusting those properly for your feet, so that's going to help you have more control of the boat. The better you fit in the boat, the more control you're going to have. Um, you want to make sure you're wearing your life jacket at all times. Um, getting a paddle that's going to be, you know, somewhat lightweight. It's going to, because that's what you you have at every stroke. You're carrying that paddle. So if you can have something that weighs less, it's going to help you. Um, and then just looking for, you know, the narrower boats are going to be faster, so you're going to get more performance out of it. So it kind of depends on what you're get, trying to get out of the sport too. Okay. And what are some of the benefits of kayaking? Um, definitely a great core workout. I mean, when you're par paddling properly, you're using your core. Um, you don't want to be using your arms because you're going to wear out pretty quick doing that. Um, it really is a full body workout. It's amazing mm -hmm. with that. Uh, it's something that almost any age can do. I mean, really, we, six or seven year olds, when, by the time you kind of have to look at how coordinated a child is, but they can do it on their own. And I mean, I have customers that are way into their 70s and 80s. It's a great a sport and we call it like the equalizer because you're out in the water. You can have, even with people who, um, if you have like a knee issue or something, nobody can tell when you're paddling on the water. It's just great that, you know, how old you are. And you don't have to be in great shape, what we consider sometimes great physical shape, because it's more balance and flexibility. Mm -hmm. So some people who haven't been great at other sports can really excel at this sport, because it's not a muscle sport. It's more like learning the correct technique. Okay, great. All right, well, we're going to ask you to show us um, a demonstration of some of those techniques in just a few minutes. So Sounds good. We're going to be right back. Okay, uh, we are 
inside, as you can tell, I'm in the kayak. We are waiting for it to stop raining, so hopefully we can get out on the water. But we wanted to show you some of the basic techniques. So actually, Tiffany is going to lead me through some of the basic techniques. Um, as you can see, first of all, even though we're inside, safety first. So you know, to protect me from any deluge that comes from this massive rainfall we're getting. Um, <laughs> we have the uh, life vest on, which you always want to wear when you're kayaking on the river or any waterway. So Tiffany, tell us a little bit about this particular kayak. This is a 14-foot boat, which is the average for what you're going to take on the Detroit River. And the big thing with this boat is it has what we call bulkheads, which is a foam wall. So there's one at the front of the boat and one behind your seat. So if you were to capsize, then you're only going to get water in your cockpit, and that's the only place you're going to have to get the water out to get back in the boat. So if you can imagine if they didn't have those walls, the whole boat would fill up with water. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of water to try to move out. So that's the biggest thing with looking at the boat that's appropriate for the river. Okay. Um, and if you noticed, so there's also, we didn't talk about their sit-on-top boats, where you're going to be more on top, but this is considered a sit inside, so you are sitting in the boat. And what I would recommend is we would adjust your foot peg, and then I'm going to have you push your legs so that they're going to go down inside the boat right there. So now you have control over the boat. Okay. So um, that's part of the whole body experience. Um, it's going to help you with moving, not just with your arms. Okay. Um, so I'm going to have you hold the paddle. And what you're going to do is you want to hold it about shoulder width apart. And the way you want the paddles is that, that, um, that the large part's going to be at the top. And now you're going to want to put one, first one hand's going to go into the water. And then you're just going to rotate and go to the... So it's really simple, just going forward. And what we say, you never change the hand stroke. So your hand, you can rotate your hands, but you're always going to keep them in that kind of position. Okay. So if you want to go backwards, now you keep your hands in that position, and then you just paddle with this blade going this way, and then coming around and having that blade go backwards. Okay. Um, as you get more sophisticated, we can also teach you strokes where you can actually move the boat sideways. But there again, your hands always are going to stay in that position. Sometimes people want to try to rotate their hands around. Mm -hmm. The big thing is you want to keep a real loose grip. That's one of the hardest things. People tend to get blisters. Mm -hmm. So if you don't grip too hard, that's going to help with that aspect. Okay. So I've seen some people, like, so when their shoulders get tired or their arms get tired, and um, obviously they're not using their whole body then. But what happens if somebody were to move their hands to here? What, what does that do? That makes you less stable. Okay. You're actually, the paddle not only moves us to your propulsion, but it also uses to balance you. So the more, every time you, especially if you get into a situation with rough water, you want to kind of paddle faster because the more your paddle's in the water, the more stable you're going to be. That is not a good position. You're not going to be able to get much right. motivation. And the same thing, you don't want to go too far out. Some people do this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's not to say that you have to leave your hands in one mm -hmm. position, but you want to keep them in that general area. Okay. Um, sometimes for beginners, we recommend even putting a piece of tape in the right location. Mm -hmm. So you kind of keep, or these are drip rings, you can pull them into where your hand should be. Okay. So you know that that's the spot that you should keep your hands. Because I know sometimes you do that, you get tired and so you start trying to move in and that's not an effective or it can make you a little tippier. Okay, and if somebody, if they're just starting out, and obviously if it's a new activity, you know, it's a new movement of their body, they might feel some tiredness, but if somebody's shoulders or arms are getting really, really tired quickly, um, are they doing something incorrectly? Perhaps? They're probably using their arms too much, okay. and you want to try to use your core more. Okay. So you want to actually rotate your whole core, which does take, takes a lot of practice. Okay. So like if with your zipper on your life jacket, you try to move, make sure that that's moving when you're moving. Okay. So, so it's so not staying moving. straight. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you're kind of, uh, so if you almost think of it like your, if your arms, you don't want to lock them, but they're kind of locked and you're moving your body to rotate your arms. Exactly. We kind of, we even say that you want to kind of keep a box and like, Think of your grandma's china in that box, and you want to keep it so if that's locked in. You don't want to do too much. You want to use these muscles as opposed to your arm muscles. Okay. And then, then the basic, so it's just the basic strokes you get into the water, and it's just the front stroke and the back stroke. Exactly. Yep. Okay. All right. And are there any tips for um, people getting in and out of the boat? Because that's where I think people are the afraid of the most. That is the hardest part. That is where we have the most cap sizes are getting in and out. You want to, um, when you get out, is to sit in the back of the boat mm -hmm. and kind of let your legs get used to it and then now put your legs over. And even if you straddle it when you get out, sometimes that can help people. Okay. Kind of depends on what the launch location is like. Some launches are easier than others. If, if you use a boat ramp, be really careful because that can be really slippery. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure your feet are very stable before you, and after you've been sitting in the boat for a couple hours, your legs can be a little jelly-like. Right? So you want to make sure you have a good stance. 
Okay, and then as far as like if somebody is, is going out with friends, you don't want to go out by yourself, um, both people are in their kayaks, um, can you propel your, like can you propel yourself to get started in the water or like how does that work with the launching? Yeah, if you want to help somebody, when you can put somebody in the water, you can actually push them out to the water. Okay. That's a good thing for somebody who's maybe not as good at, you know, a beginner kayak or something, who can help them by doing that. Okay. And you just want to, the big thing too is keeping your head above your body, because once you start going like this, this is when you start getting technique. Okay. So that's it, kind of, to keep your body up. I mean, not in a going totally upright, but just don't do too many motions to begin with, to get your, your balance off. I mean, you find that when somebody's paddling, because um, I've been kayaking before, or especially in the team, where um, just the water from the paddling just seems to come right in the boat. So how do you prevent that from happening or minimize that? I minimize it, right. <laughs> it, is, it is a wet sport. You are going to get wet. Um, that's it's kind of the better paddle stroke is what helps that. Um, the drip rings on the paddle do help a little bit, but you just want to kind of like just practice a good paddle stroke, and that's going to help prevent the water from coming in. Mm -hmm. But generally, even the best paddlers are still going to get water in the cockpit. Okay. And as you get more experience, there are things called a spray skirt, which actually goes around your waist and then the, around the boat. But I really recommend that you know what you're doing before you would do that, and then that's going to keep the water out. That's what people do too, like when they want to roll. So mm -hmm. when you get really good, you can do use a spray skirt that's going to, if you want to do a 360, it's going to keep all the water out and keep you in the boat. Okay. And does there come a point where like you're you're paddling and you know water is coming in the boat? Does it come a point where you're saying, hmm, I think this is a little bit too much water and I need to bail some out? Yeah. Um, having water in your boat can make your boat unstable as well. So we recommend they have bilge pumps where you can pump it out, but even taking a sponge with you okay. and periodically just taking putting the water out is a good idea. Okay, great. And then for somebody, let's say somebody who is just starting out and is doing it for the first time, what do you recommend maybe for time frame? To go out just to get used to. Um, generally, we say no more than two hours for beginners. It's usually about the, amount, the most amount of time that you want to sit in a boat. Okay. Um, so between an hour and two hours to start out with. Okay, great. All right. Well, there any other um, anything else that you want to let people know about the basics or safety issues that we forgot? Um, we get a lot of questions that kind of want to put about the boat. But um, so these are bungee deck lines. So this mm -hmm. is like you want to hold your water bottle, and then the decks or the lines on the side is actually a safety line. So if you okay. did come out of the boat, now this is what you hold on to. Okay. And we talk about with capsizing, it's like wearing your seatbelt. I mean, you, I still wear my seatbelt even under, but in a car accident, it doesn't happen that often, but you want to have be prepared for it if it does happen to happen. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. All right, well, thank you so much for, um, for going through the basic strokes, and um, we're still hoping that the rain will stop and that we can get out on the water. Um, and if not, then you just have to use your best imagination here. <laughs> so we'll be right back in just a few minutes. Unfortunately, I was not able to get out into the water today as we had hoped due to the rain. So instead, as the rain cleared up, I'm bringing you some footage from a group paddle in Wyandotte so you can get a better idea of what it's like to get into the kayaks and go down the river. <laughs>
more thing in the shop that is not a kayak. And this is a stand-up paddleboard, correct? Correct. <laughs> so these you said are, are new, so why don't you tell people what is this all about? <laughs> um, the stand-up paddleboards seem to be really good for people who want to get a workout. Um, they now you can take classes where you can learn how to do yoga on them. Um, it's a super workout. Um, it's a little harder in the Detroit River because you want to learn how to their waves and things. So I would recommend if you're going to get started to find a beach area because you have the likelihood of falling off of these is a little hard or a little more with a kayak. Mm -hmm. So you want to practice somewhere where you can climb back on. Um, the big thing with safety on these is making sure you have a leash. So that's connecting your calf to the board. So in case something happens, you don't want the board taken off without you. Okay. Um, but you can, and some people will practice by kneeling. That's the first thing you want to do, kneel on the board, and then you can slowly learn how to stand up. Mm -hmm. But it's been a great for fitness um, in terms of the paddle sports industry. Okay, great. And so this is, it's a uh, more stabilized than a surfboard and you can't actually surf on it. Right. I and mean, you can if you get some waves, but these are starting to get a lot, quite a bit wider. So okay. they're more designed for just uh, standing up. And we don't have a lot of great waves around here, mm -hmm. so it's more for flatter water. Okay, great. So we just have new water sports coming out all the time yeah. coming out this way. So even though we're not in the ocean and people think of some of these things on the ocean, you can still do these things in the Great Lakes and, and on our rivers here. So. So I want to thank you very much for talking to us today all about kayaking. We appreciate it, Tiffany. Thank you. I hope you learned a little something today about kayaking, and maybe you'll go out and give it a try. Even if you don't try kayaking, you know, we have all these lovely water sports, and we have great waterways in Michigan, so you can do a lot of things out on the water. So if you're looking for information on kayaking, you can um, contact Tiffany at Riverside Kayak Connection. I'm sure she will help you out and tell you all the information you need to know. For other healthy living tips and tricks, you can check out my website at www.veggiepatty.com. Remember that no matter the cards you were dealt or your current state of health, you have the power to take charge of your health. So never give up and never stop learning. The solution you seek may be just around the corner. Tiffany, if you can join me in a toast to our viewers, we wish you a wonderful today and an even better tomorrow. Here's to your health.